Hi, I'm Captain Mike. In this video, we're going to explore some of the things that uh, you can do to modify plaster to make it lighter. Uh, I came up on this idea because I do a lot of casting, both with plaster and with uh, concrete. And concrete, of course, makes great ornamental uh, castings. Uh, and it's heavy and it's very, very durable. Uh, an exception to that or an alternative to uh, solid concrete is what's called hypertufa. And um, hypertufa is a mixture of Portland cement, some perlite or vermiculite, uh, some sand, and um, some peat moss. And you can vary that recipe a good bit, and if you get online and you check uh, Hypertufa recipes, you'll see that they do vary a lot uh, from the amount of water that you add to it to uh, the various ingredients. But regardless, once you get it all mixed up, it is a lighter alternative to concrete, and it looks like concrete. Uh, it weathers well because actually this patina right here or this front coating is, is Portland concrete and it is the uh, primary surface so it weathers well but it also has an aged kind of uh -oh, an aged kind of look to it also some people like that some people don't you can get uh, if you experiment with it you can make the hyper tufa very smooth but that's not what this this video is about uh, it's a little rougher on the back. You can see where some of the lighter particulate comes to the surface. So that is hypertufa, and that's what led me to this video. Now, I cast a lot of things in plaster. Some things uh, of the things I cast are like plaster molds for ceramic slip casting, uh, but I also do some ornamental. Um, why? because I like to cast it. Uh, they're only good for inside, but you can paint them, you can color plaster, you can do a lot of different things with plaster, and if you buy it like I do in, you know, in 50, 60 pound bags, it's cheap. I use in just an industrial grade plaster for this. Don't see any sense in anything fancier. But this is, you know, I cast some big stuff uh, all the way down to uh, little bitty stuff. And, uh, you know, I cast just all kinds of things. Kids like to, the kids like to play with these, and so I, I'm always casting up stuff like that for them to paint. Uh, in an attempt to make a lighter object, just as I messed around, I took this little old turtle here and I, I hollered it out. It takes a little bit of work to get the plaster just as it begins to set up so that you can do this, because I didn't dig it out, I just pushed it around, okay? So that made a lot lighter little turtle, just fragile, and uh, that's fine for what I'm going to do with it. Now, um, what I came up with was adding uh, microbeads to my plaster. And I did a little experimenting around about and uh, just to see what they would do because the microbeads have a tendency to float. By microbeads, I'm talking about the little plastic styrofoam microbeads that come out of these little neat little pillows. You know, we all like these pillows, you know. I mean, I've got a bunch of them. And once they get kind of stinky, smelly from whatever, you can wash them. But the, the micro beads inside begin to deteriorate a little bit and they're not as nice and squishy as they used to be. So you can cut them open right here and uh, recycle the beads and, you know, keep them in a bag. Now, they are really static electricity. Uh, prone. They have a high charge and so as you fool with them they go everywhere. They get all over everything and they're kind of a pain in the hiney. But uh, you can you can beat that if you if you work on it a little bit. Uh, now this is just a good time while we're talking about things flying through the air. Uh, in this video you're going to want to take just a few little precautions. Alas, here they are. You probably ought to use a mask if you can find one. Uh, 
You can go to some of the places now and buy 50 of these for about 40 bucks. It's ridiculous, but hey, sign of the times. But you should use one. I've got a respirator that I use a lot of times. If I'm really worried about wanting to live forever, I'll use a, uh, a, uh, a filter. Gloves, if your hands are sensitive, and you, the, everything that we're going to do here pretty much uh, washes off. But hey, there's no problem. I use a lot of these gloves because uh, everything soaks in my hands and they look bad enough as it is. And then, of course, you know, if you're worried about your eyes, there should be nothing here to bother your eyes, but you never know. And the old faithful standby uh, eyewear. If you're like me and half blind, you wear glasses. Now, uh, let's kind of get into what I'm going to try to do here. This was the first experiment that I tried. Um, just to see what would happen. And I took a regular, um, I just mixed up some plaster as I normally would for a casting, dumped in some micro beads. I don't know uh, how much in this case. I just dumped them in, stirred them up, poured it in a round mold, and let it sit. Now, the top of this come out very smooth, just like you'd expect. It's like what you want with a mold. And the microbeads all kind of, this is the way it was oriented in the mold, they all kind of floated to the top. Now this was pretty thin. I, I, I normally, it'll be pretty thin when you're just casting plaster. They all floated to the top. Not a problem, not really, but it just gave me an idea of what they were doing. You can see here. Okay, you can see what it was doing. So, it did make it lighter. And I said, well, gee, this, this ought to be worth, uh, you know, kind of carrying a step further. Now's a good time to uh, mention uh, a little information about microbeads and the different kinds there are. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is a regular microbead. You can kind of see here how they, they bounce around in here. They're, they're round spheres and they're styrofoam of some description. They also make them in just hard plastic. I, I, I don't have any of those. Uh, you also are gonna run across, if you get online, microbeads that are glass. And these little microbeads here are somewhat iridescent and, and they reflect light. This is used primarily for mixing with paint, putting down on the roadways so that when your lights hit it at night, uh, they reflect, and I even have some very, very, very fine. I wouldn't even so much call these micro beads as I would they are, uh, it's just a powder, but I would imagine if you put it under a microscope or something, they're going to be spherical. That's just saying. So we're going to work with these. This is what we're going to work with. They're extremely, extremely light. They almost won't register on my scale. And speaking of scales, what I have done for this experiment is I have measured out eight ounces of plaster. I have measured three of them. We're gonna do three different batches here. And we're gonna, in one of these batches, we're gonna use four ounces of water. We're gonna use six ounces of water. And we're going to use eight ounces of water. And that's gonna give me different consistencies in each of the plaster. And it'll allow the micro beads to do different things. And I'm going to mix two of these little plastic glasses full of micro beads. Each experiment will receive the same amount of micro beads. To tell them apart, I'm going to add like a table, a quarter tablespoon of color. The first one will get green, the second one will get ultramarine blue, the next one will get some red oxide. And these are all just powdered colors, okay, green other oxides mainly. And uh, that'll just give them a little color. I've measured them all out using the scale here, so they're pretty close. And uh, that's pretty much it. When we get through this experiment, we'll weigh these things wet and then we will waste some that have dried for a while and uh, kind of come to a conclusion if it's something that you, you know, want to see. 
and then I have a little surprise ending for you. So let's get started with mixing all of this stuff up. Okay, we're going to use this bowl right here, and it's really simple. We're just going to, for the first one, we're going to take the, um, the plaster and add the water kind of slowly. This is going to be very, very thick here, okay? Very thick. Let it sit for a little bit, and let the, the, this is where you do plaster. You let the water, or the plaster, excuse me, absorb the water. That keeps the lumps down. Uh, and once you get it pretty much the way you think it ought to be, then you start the stirring process. And in this case, there's so little water that it did not go to the bottom. It's going to be a little lumpy, but we really, really don't care at this case. We're going to do it all as scientifically as we can, which means duplicate the process and write down the variables. And then you kind of make a decision based on those variables and the consistent parts. So that's getting thick. So what we're going to do is take some green, not that much, dump it in, stir it up a little bit because this will start setting up pretty quick. This turns it kind of a mini green. And while we're at it, we're going to go ahead and dump these in, okay? Two of them. And it's going to get to a dough-like consistency. And you're going to have to stir pretty quick uh, to keep it from starting to set up. We don't want it to set up. We want it to be really mixed well and ready to go in the mold. So I think we're about there. This is kind of boring like watching paint dry. But we get this one done and I will just fast forward through all the others, okay? Because you know, this is going to be the same thing, only different. Take our mold, start putting this stuff in it. I'm bumping it on the table to spread it out evenly and to get as many air bubbles out of it. It's not really important that the air bubbles come out of this right now because it's just a test, but it's something I always do. Okay, that's the green. Put your top back on everything so you won't inadvertently knock it over and make a mess. Uh, ask me how I know. There, that's secured. Okay, I'm going to wash this out. And don't wash your plaster out inside in your sink if you can help it. But I'll come back and I will do these other three. And I'll just fast forward right through it. And then we will let them set up, okay? We have th all three uh, different combinations mixed up and color coded. Uh, so we're going to let them dry. It's going to take maybe an hour, hour and a half uh, for, before I can pop these out of the molds. And when I do, I will weigh them because they will have the most water content in them. And then I will compare them against uh, an earlier batch that I did for uh, for uh, a comparison and we'll see how much water 
uh, actually evaporates out of the, uh, the plaster mix over time. So I'm going to go eat by lunch, and when I come back, we'll pop these out and see where we are. Okay, we are back, and we have unmolded all of our experiments. Well, sort of, but I can explain this. So here we have, of course, the green, the blue, and uh, the red, and these are still full of water. In fact, they're still, they're still a little on the warm side as they are curing. Should have let this sit a little longer, but uh, I already knew what it was going to do because I could see the uh, separations and all that was taking place. So I went ahead and tried early and uh, it would, just didn't work. Uh, but fine, that's okay. I can make a conclusion, conclusion from that. Now, this is the dry. This has been drying oh, a week or so from the first video I made about this and there was no audio so I had to rethink it, check my equipment. And as you can see it's lightened up a little bit but all the water has evaporated. It is the same with the blue and here with the green, you can see that there is an even distribution of uh, microbeads. Very light and a very even distribution. The blue, it begins to separate just like the, the first test that I did in the white one. Uh, you can see there's plasters risen, or dropped to the bottom and the microbeads kind of risen to the top and uh, then the red one is <laughs> really interesting the red one just literally separated there was so much of the micro beads that rose to the top with so little plaster in them that it just that's literally micro beads only and it would collapse in your hand if you rubbed it very uh, just rubbed it much at all. So that's what happened here. As you can see, the, the, the microbeads is just separated right out. And it's because of the, the amount of water that was in the mix. It allowed the uh, plaster mix to be very fluid. And uh, that mix was like 50-50, one to one. It's a lot of water for plaster, but we wanted to see, didn't we? So there you go. The blue one, which would might would even work a little better if uh, you put more microbeads and forced them down. I don't know, uh, but this the blue was uh, eight ounces of plaster, six ounces of, of uh, water. So that's what. Can't even do the math in my crazy old head. But anyway, that's the difference there. And this one, of course, the green uh, was uh, two to one. And it worked out just fine. Now, I haven't cut these, but I can guarantee you. Oh, heck, let's cut them. Let me see if I can find a knife. Actually, let me go put them on the bandsaw right quick. And we'll, we'll cut them that way. Okay, I cut these on my bandsaw because it's much, much quicker and does a good job. And just as in the first experiment with these right here, we have a very nice uh, distribution of microbeads from top to bottom. So if you were going to do that, and you wanted to make sure that it was going to work, then the uh, uh, 2 to 1 water ratio in your microbeads seems to work best. As you can see, this one here is doing the same thing. We have a line of plaster. And then the micro beads, same way. Now, as I mentioned before, you might could put more micro beads in this mixture. That would be something you'd have to experiment with if you thought it was necessary. This is a no-go. Don't go really sloppy because micro beads are all going to go up above the plaster, and uh, that's what you're going to do. That's what you're going to get. Now, just for grins and giggles, th this 
uh, wet right out of the uh, uh, mold weighed uh, 11.5 uh, ounces and when it dried it weighed 9.1 this one out of the uh, the mold wet weighed 13.6 and dry it was 9.2 and the red wet in in the container but I took terror for the container it was like 15.7 and dry is 9.4 so you can see 9.1 9.2 and 9.4 the ingredients all pretty much stayed the same I'm sure there's some moisture in it take forever to get it all out but all of these weights right here had to do with the water the water also affects the strength of this, so remember that. If you're going to use micro beads in this, uh, experiment to see if it's going to be as tough and durable after you have molded it into your choice of subjects before you get really wild and crazy with it. Now, I told you there was going to be a little something extra, so let's just push these things here out of the way. And let me show you some stuff here. Now, this is, as I had showed you before, this little mask is a uh, Hyper Tufa, okay? It weighs, it's been made a long time, it's 13.65. Uh, now, here's a regular plaster one. It weighs one pound. And here is a solid concrete one, and it weighs one pound, 14 ounces. And here is the one with the micro beads. And um, I've got to weigh it. Okay, let's see what this thing weighs. It weighs 15.7. It's been drying for quite a while. Now, the... the uh, the weight various is on all these has got to do probably with thicknesses too, so you can take that into account. This is, this is not really rocket scientist testing, it's just uh, kind of backyard redneck testing. So, anyhow, who, how, that's what we have with this right here. Now, this little guy, I went a little bit further uh, when I made him, and I put some sparkle with inside just incorporated it in the plaster so it's all through it but enough of it came on the face that at least in real life you can see it can you can you uh, see it in a video we'll see I use this stuff which is kind of some iridescent powdered stuff and I've seen it in girls faces and in their hair and all that kind of stuff but it's also an arts and crafty kind of thing so I put some in there I thought it'd be kind of neat so there we have it uh, that's what I do with the micro beads. I have lots of them. I plan to use some more micro beads in the concrete. I've done that before. Uh, do something with these. Dispose of them properly. Uh, I don't think they're good for the environment. Uh, it's definitely not good to be in your house around small children in the air. They're breathable. Uh, so dispose of them properly or use them in something where you can control their dispersal and pretty much that's it. That is my video on playing with micro beads and incorporating them into various finishes and, and, and uh, carriers or whatever. And if you have ideas, uh, please let me know if there's something that I have done wrong or you'd like to see change, let me know. Uh, I don't mind comments as long as they're adult uh, and everyone can gain from them. Uh, you be adult, I'll be adult, and we'll all learn from this. Uh, so pretty much that's it. Hit the like button if you like this video, the subscribe, subscribe button if you want to see more videos or the latest ones that will come up, and hit the notification button and you'll be automatically uh, notified. Uh, I don't uh, monetize my channel. 
Uh, please let me know if any monetization pops up during this channel because I don't authorize it. I do this for grins and giggles and fun and hopefully to help someone else out along the way so they don't have to make the mistakes I do. So that's it. That's my video. Uh, I'm Captain Mike and I'm out of here.